Let's build out of retired railroad flat cars. Necessity is the mother of invention. Hello and welcome to this edition of the State of Soy. I'm Aaron Putsey and we are in rural Buchanan County and we're here near a very special bridge and I'm visiting with the Buchanan County engineer, Brian Kyerlieber. And Brian, first of all, set the stage. This bridge is unique. What makes it so? Well, it's built out of retired railroad flat cars. So what we've done is we've taken six cars that were originally 90 foot cars they actually cut them down to 68 feet, two inches each car. And that takes us right outside the bolsters, right outside where the trucks or the wheels were mounted. And then we'll build abutments. In this case, we put a pier in, and that's how I have six of them. So I've got about 135 foot of length in this bridge. What this bridge is constructed of makes it pretty unique, and it is through the work of the Soy Transportation Coalition. So connect some dots for us. Well, the Soy Transportation Coalition actually funded the live feed cameras for this bridge. And they also helped me to drop the set of plans too. And it's basically taking refurbished flatbed rail cars, converting them into bridge structure, bridge support, at a tremendous savings. This one I expect be right at a third the cost of standard construction. So what got you interested in looking at a different way to go about constructing a bridge and doing it for, again, half to maybe a third of the cost of a conventional structure? Necessity is the mother of invention. When I first saw some of their bridges, I said, what did you get yourself into? What I got myself into is an opportunity for success. <laughs> right, here in Buchanan here County. Here in Buchanan County. With over 250 bridges. And in your career here over the past 32 years or so, you've replaced how many of those? 146. Keeping those bridges up and functioning is absolutely critical, especially for the farmers, correct? Absolutely, yes. And I was replacing a bridge from 1870. I replaced a bridge from 1872. I replaced the bridge from 1875 where we brought in an Army Chinook helicopter and flew it up to Fredericksburg to put on a pedestrian trail. I can tell that you really, though, take it seriously in terms of keeping these roadways open and functioning. And of course, that starts with having bridges that are in good repair. Absolutely does. My issue is I've got a bridge three quarters of a mile upstream that's on a pavement. And when that one gets closed down for replacement, it's about an 18 mile trip around for the farmers. And now that becomes a huge issue. It sure does. And you start replacing a 130 foot bridge, you don't do it overnight. What's the construction time on something like this compared to maybe more of a conventional construction? This one took me a little longer. I probably had close to three months in it, but generally about six weeks for my two to three person bridge crew to build a bridge. So where did you source these flatbed rail cars from? My predominant source is based out of Kansas City and his business plan works good with what we're trying to do. Because I'm a strong believer, I want to inspect those bridges prior to delivery. So we'll actually pile into my pickup, drive to Kansas City, look the bridges over and drive back the same day. When they get a few of them down there, they've got something that I'm looking for because they know what, I'm, what we're wanting. Then I'll go down and pick out which cars we want. They'll take the, the trucks off the wheels, they'll take the brake lines, they'll take off the hitches and everything. I put these on my rock roads. I try not to put them on my paved roads. And with 75, 80% of the county roads being rock roads, I got a lot of homes for them. You sure do. Well, Brian, thank you so much for walking us through and talking us through this very innovative approach to bridge repair. Again, a great collaboration between county engineers like Brian and the work and the research of the Soy Transportation Coalition funded in part by the Iowa Soybean Association. Reporting for this episode of the State of Soy, I'm Aaron Putzi. Progress is a human invention. We look at our world and we imagine how to make it better. That's the power of human ingenuity. We can redefine what's possible. At Bayer, we're shaping the future of agriculture. Like farms where all life grows together. It's not impossible, it's progress.